cos of a minus b is given by cos a cos b plus sin a sin b. So we can write the cos of the difference of two angles in terms of the cos and sine of each individual angle a and b. Now we are going to look at the case where a is greater than b and where both a and b are positive but actually it doesn't matter um, it's also true for situations where a is less than b or um, for situations where both a and b are negative um, I might briefly mention that later so I've constructed two angles a and b in this unit circle and we know from previous videos that the coordinates of this point here are given by cos b comma sine b and the coordinates of this point here are given by cos a sine a so both b and a are measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis now notice that the angle between these two lines is a minus b I'm calling the side that's opposite angle a minus b in this triangle d now of course a and b don't have to be these angles shown I can uh, vary a and b b doesn't have to be an acute angle so you can see that the angle between the two lines is a minus b now there are certain situations where this angle isn't a minus b this situation here um, well the angle be I'm talking about the angle inside the triangle so I'll deal with that situation later but for now um, we'll just consider the situation where a minus b is the angle inside this triangle now to prove this result here what we do is we consider the distance between these two points we get this distance in two ways we get it by using the cosine rule and we get it by using the distance formula from um, coordinate geometry as a reminder this is what the cosine rule looks like so we take any triangle doesn't have to be right angled and uh, we label the sides small a b and c so the cosine rule gives us the relationship between the three sides and the ang one of the angles in the triangle um, this side here small a is opposite capital A b and c are the two sides that contain angle a so in this picture here D is the side that's opposite the angle that we're interested in we're interested in angle A minus B so A minus B takes the place of A in the cosine rule um, what about sides B and C well they're the two sides that enclose that angle now we're dealing with a unit circle here so the two sides of this triangle are one unit equal to radius so we could say a is one and b is one sorry b is one and c is one following this here uh, small b and small c and then we've minus two times the product of the two sides that's the minus two bc so it's minus two times one times one times the cos of the enclosed angle well we're interested in this angle so we're getting the cos of a minus b uh, simplifying this one squared plus one squared is two and we've minus two here okay so that's d squared worked out um, using the cosine rule by the way d is equal to a here of course now we get the distance between these two points using the distance formula from trigonometry which is essentially Pythagoras' theorem um, we subtract the x values of these two points that's like x2 minus x1 squared then we subtract the y values that's like y2 minus y1 squared sum those squares and uh, then we normally get the square root to get the distance but we're just interested in the distance squared here so we don't see any square root over this of course the d squareds um, have to be the same whether we use the cosine rule or the distance formula from coordinate geometry so we expand out uh, these squares here we get cos squared there cos squared a minus 2 times cos a times cos b plus cos squared b square the first multiply first by second double then square the second do the same here square the first sine squared a first by second and double gives minus 2 sine a sine b then we square the second minus sine of b all squared is plus sine squared b next we use an important identity um, which is 
used twice here actually. It states that cos squared of any angle plus sine squared of that angle is equal to 1. So we can see cos squared a plus sine squared a appearing here. That gives us 1. But we also have cos squared b plus sine squared b. That's also 1. This is an identity. It's true for any angle. So whether it's a or b or whatever, um, we get 1. So we have basically 1 plus 1, which gives us this 2 here. Now, what about what's left? Well, we can factorize 2 out of this term and out of this term. Well, we can actually factorize minus 2 out of both of these terms. And we're left with this here. So basically, we have that 2 minus 2 times cos of a minus b equals this here. So we just compare these two, of course. These are equal. So if we subtract 2 from both sides, the 2s will cancel out. If we divide both sides by minus 2, we're left with the result. So all of this makes sense provided a minus b is inside this triangle, because then we can talk about the cosine rule. It doesn't make much sense though if um, a minus b is not inside the triangle. Like how do we get d using the cosine rule now? a minus b is outside the triangle. Now to get the angle that's inside the triangle here, we have to take a minus b from um, 360 degrees because these two angles make a full circle. So we have to get 360 minus this angle. Now we know from a previous video an angle of minus 30 degrees is the same as an angle of plus 330 degrees. But a negative angle is measured clockwise from the positive x-axis. The positive angle is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. For the purposes of getting the sine, cos or tan of an angle, we can say in general that 360 minus x equals minus x. So if we're getting, say, the cos of 360 minus x, it's the same thing as getting the cos of minus x. So x is any angle. But we also know from a previous video, uh, namely the video on negative angles, or you can look it up, whatever, that the cos of a negative angle, the cos of minus x is just the same as the cos of x. So we can see that the cos of 360 minus any angle is the same as the cos of that angle. So if our picture looks like this, when we're using the cosine rule, we'll have to get the cos of 360 minus a minus b. Now we know that that's just the same thing as the cos of a minus b. So we go back here, uh, we re imagine replacing x with a minus b. So the cos of 360 minus x will be the same as the cos of x, where x is a minus b. So that's what we would have to do in this situation. So this result is still valid for this situation. Okay, so now we have this identity established. What if we want to get the cos of a plus b? How can we use this identity? Well, what we do is we replace b with minus b. So cos of a minus b becomes cos of a minus minus b. So we just sub uh, minus b in for b. So this proof will actually work for negative values of b. I haven't really shown it here, but um, but I suppose we could imagine instead of showing b measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis, I could have shown be measured in the other direction. So this would be an angle minus b. And then I could have considered an angle minus a, but basically we'll get something very similar and this same proof holds. Anyway, to get back to this thing here, all we do is replace b in the right hand side with minus b. And then we um, use results for negative angles, for the cos and sine of negative angles. The cos of a negative angle is just the cos of that angle. So the cos of minus b is just cos b. However, the sine of minus b 
is minus sine b. So this is explained in another video, and usually these results are tabulated. So you just look them up. Um, the sine of minus b is minus sine b, so we get, well, we can take the minus sine out basically here, and we get this result. So to get the cos of a plus b from the cos of a minus b, basically we just end up changing this sign. That's the only thing that changes. This sign goes from plus to minus. So we could summarize our two identities with this expression here. Cos of a minus or plus b equals cos a cos b plus or minus sine a sine b. So if we're, um, if we're dealing with the minus sign here, we must have a plus sign here. If we're talking about cos of a plus b, we must have a minus sign here. Now, the proof that we just did depended on the fact that a was greater than b. Um, what happens if a is less than b? Well, if a is less than b, it means that a minus b must be less than 0. Just bring the b over. What can we say about the cos of a minus b in this case? Well, Unlike before, a minus b is now negative, but what we can do is we can write it like this. We can just take a minus sign, factorize minus 1 out of a minus b, and we get this. Now we have the cos of some negative quantity, and we know that from negative angles, the cos of minus x is just the cos of x. So this is just the cos of b minus a. Let's see what this is. Um, well, we just apply our formula, but we instead of um, a we have b, instead of b we have a. So we have cos of b times cos of a plus sine of b times the sine of a. So we're just using this formula here. We're just interchanging a with b. So this formula here, well, the proof involved a being greater than b. So if we interchange a and b um, for our situation, then we get this here. And uh, in this case, we can see that b is actually greater than a. That's, wh that's what we're assuming here from the outset. But you see, we get exactly the same result. Just have these terms interchanged. That's just the same as cos a, cos b, plus sine a, sine b. So everything works out, even if a is less than b.